not too tired. So that presentation on the business track is about launching a cloud service provider with OpenStack. So my name is Philippe Thériault, and I have my colleague uh, Rafael Ferreira in support of me if, uh, if, need, if needed. A um, little bit of background around me. Um, I've been with Innovance for the last few months. Um, started in the cloud computing business around 2000 when we uh, actually have launched uh, one of the first uh, cloud service provider in Canada. At the time, the word cloud was not invented, so we were calling that application service provider, but delivering kind of the same, uh, same benefit. I've uh, been involved in the launch and creation of many uh, cloud service providers on various platforms on VMware, CloudStack, OpenStack. Uh, and in the last few years, I was an advisor to investment firms, uh, mutual funds, investment companies uh, who were investing in many uh, cloud computing businesses. And I've joined um, Innovance uh, last June as the chief commercial officer for international expansion. Um, just a quick add on what Innovance does. Basically, we do three things. Uh, the first thing we do is uh, we design, build, run um, public cloud infrastructures for telcos and service providers, all for a country, um, especially following July 6th uh, for those countries who want, uh, let's say, non-Western build cloud computing environment uh, so, or just without the NSA API. Uh, so this is what, uh, this is what we do. <laughs> Um, we also do exactly the same thing but for private cloud, uh, mostly for enterprises, for the ones who want to re-internalize certain workloads, uh, and for, really for the ones who, who want to launch a, public, a private cloud that is inspired by the public cloud uh, services, so similar. And then we've also managed some, um, some specific applications on, on top of multi-cloud, so we call that the multi-cloud management, basically uh, balancing and distributing some of our customers critical application on top of uh, Rackspace, Amazon, uh, IBM, uh, Google Engine, uh, HP Cloud, and some others. Um, we're head office based in Paris, um, I'm more on the US side, uh, with office in uh, Montreal and San Francisco, with our office in Bangalore, and uh, in the next uh, couple of days, uh, an office in Singapore, an office in Singapore will be open, and also an office in the, in the Middle East. Uh, we, uh, we were 50 employees when I joined last June, and now we are uh, more than 100 employees. Um, so that presentation is about launching a successful cloud service providers. Uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, the main topic is about the conditions to launch a successful cloud service provider, uh, knowing that probably no one wants to fail in that business. And the conditions, quite simple, but also quite complicated. Actually, um, the recipe is simple, so you just need, let's say, good ingredients, so that, that you can consider that the, the technology. Then you also need the recipe. Uh, you can improvise if you want, but the best thing is to follow a recipe, and then you need a chef. So you choose, you either go with this one or that one. And, 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 and since it's all, we're on the business track, um, that could be on technology, but unfortunately for the, 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 geek, the geek in you, to successfully launch a business, it's much more about business than about technology. That's the way you will look at things. That's the way how you will justify the technology and how you will finance it more than the, the technology itself. And, 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 and it's, it's all about that. Uh, for those of you who studied marketing, that's, that's the holy grail of marketing. That's the holy grail of successfully launch something. You need a good product. You need a good go-to-market strategy, sales, marketing. Of course, you need a good technology. You need a good foundation for your business. But if you fail in operation, your business will be a disaster. If you fail, if you have the best product in the world, but you, you cannot sell it, also, your, product, your, your business will not be a good, a good success. And all of that is nothing today. If you're not the first in the market, the market shrinked, although it's a market that evolves every day. Um, so you need to add your own value. And for us in IT, that's sometimes that's the most complex, complex things to do, adding value, identifying what's our value. You can look at the market saying that, the market is full and there's so, ma so many providers that it's, uh, it's totally use useless entering that market. Or you can look at it and say, yeah, you have something unique, you have your, your own value added, 
and then you can compete in that market. So since we are at OpenStack Summit, uh, yes, I'm going to talk about OpenStack. And actually, OpenStack is an, an, an amazingly good engine to start and to leverage to start your own cloud service provider. Whether it's an internal cloud service provider, if you've reached that level of maturity, or if you want to become a public cloud service provider. However, OpenStack, and that's interesting, is also a very interesting, very powerful business enabler. And then just based on the conversation we can have here, that's, that's a good example. So back to the diagram, so basically your obsession to be successful in that business has to be your added value. And then that leads to one single thing, three uh, a famous three letters acronym, your unique selling proposition. So how will you differentiate, how, how your service will differentiate from other, from the other services available in the market? So that's the ingredients that you need in your recipe to have a success. So now the road to success, how will you reach the success? So basically, um, to find the, the root, basically you need to find the problem. And, and sometimes finding the problem is, is kind of tricky a bit. And for those who have a solution for problems that basically don't have solution, that's the best way to make a lot of money in, the, in that, in a, actually in general. Either you create a problem or, uh, there's a lot of companies in the IT industry that create problems and they solve patches to solve those problems. But otherwise, if you, you have to find a problem. And sometimes, especially the, 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 the techno guys inside of us will look at a certain situation saying, okay, there's a problem here. Uh, I'll give you an example. So you could consider that, oh, there's an opportunity. People want an online CRM. Is, is this a problem to solve? Not at all. Actually, what people want. So people are tired of upgrades, patches, and complicated CRM data replication synchronization. That's a problem. So then, if you go to the market with an, an, an online CRM where the data are ever synced, the way you will tailor your marketing, the way you will organize, the way you will go to market will be totally different if you focus on basically the pain, the upgrade, the patches, the synchronization, that's the way you're gonna sell your product instead of if you focus on the fact that it's online because you will basically spend a lot of money trying to convince people to go online instead of basically having them imagine, imagine anything how it's gonna be easy when their data will be ever synced or where they will not have to manage patches or upgrades. So here are a few problems that basically you can solve and that actually that's a mix of that's a hodgepodge of, of, of problems and, and, and kind of uh, ideas, <laughs> but um, uh, commonly uh, where there are opportunities for public cloud providers, it's where the resources are hard to find, where it's complicated or it's too expensive to find skilled resources. A good example now in the, around the Bay Area, uh, finding, uh, which basically San Francisco, San Jose area, Finding a system administrator under $150,000 a year of salary, it's barely mission impossible. So basically, where in the rest of the United States, you can find system administrator for probably half of that price. So that's, that creates a problem that is killing some economic. Um, so if you have a solution to that, so basically, you can make money. So the lack of support for ever-changing IT environment in certain, in certain areas. Too many vendors involved doing finger pointing especially in the small and medium enterprise market, where I'm always used the same analogy, who, who, who will they call when they will not be able to attach a Dropbox document to a Gmail uh, email in, uh, on their iPhone? Uh, they need support, and if you have a solution to that, you're gonna make money. Support or interface in specific language, data hosted in specific geography, or the need for a provider compliant with certain regulation. In the United States, we have, let's say, the HIPAA for healthcare information prote patient protection. Uh, that's PIPEDA in Canada. That's another acronym in France. That's another acronym in the UK. So basically, service providers are looking for, let's say, SaaS providers in the healthcare business are looking for specific providers, YAS providers or PASS providers that ha have those certification 
So basically, they're looking for something. There's a problem. There's a need. Then you need to find your value added. So what will you add to the mix? And, and that mix of a problem and your value added will be your unique selling, pro selling proposition. So basically, that could be geographic proximity. That could be low, la low latency. You're close enough, or you are in certain, certain geography. I know that in Mexico, there's not that many uh, infrastructure as a service provider, al although there's, there's great need. Um, you have an end-to-end -end SLA, especially in the telco where we see a lot, a lot, a lot of demand. Um, an end-to-end -end SLA is something that could be only delivered sometimes by telcos because they control, they can, they can take the control of the SLA at the router and basically deliver the whole stack. Um, you could do billing in local currency and you can do billing locally. It's very hard in Venezuela, they have access to a certain, a certain pack of US dollars. So if you can bill them in Venezuela in their currency, Actually, it's much easier for them that if you try, uh, if they have to go to the bank and basically pay you. Um, you have a fixed price where everyone has a variable price. You have a vertical solution for a specific, uh, specific industry or specific uh, sector. Let's say, what about a community cloud for a PAX system in the healthcare industry? Um, if you build your own network, you build your own data center, or maybe you partner with someone, there, there's a lot of demand for that. What about a community cloud for order kind of it's in the media and entertainment business, or you have specific skills. So for media and entertainment, that's a good example, where if you have specific skills in the streaming, let's say for streaming servers, then you can build something specific. You can offload a burden of the shoulders of, of a lot of, let's say, gaming or media and entertainment businesses. Um, so, so sources, so you must, your energy must go on that. So sorry to upset you. Not necessarily on OpenStack. Your energy must go on that. Otherwise, you'll have the best technology in the world, but you will never be able to sell it. So is there a market for you? Um, that I have interesting discussions with a lot, of, a lot of big vendors, a lot of big telcos, a lot of dominant players. So that's the Garden Magic Quadrant. Everyone recognizes that. Um, so those are the big guys. That's a crowded market. So should you go in that business? Is it interesting in entering that business, competing against those guys? Actually, you can, you can take the problem with many angles. The first one is that they're too, be, they're too big, and actually you cannot compete. You will never be a successful public cloud service provider. And if you, if you, if you want to tackle and if you want to basically enter the same market with exactly the same value proposition or unique selling point. However, you can say that they can't solve any problem. They'll never be in every geography. They will never be close enough to every customer. They will never have all the skills that your customer will want. And I believe that we are only at the early stage of migration from, uh, of, of a lot of servers and storage volumes from on-premise to off-premise. So basically, there's a lot of needs that, that, that will have to be fulfilled. So the right way to look at the market, from my perspective, um, is that those big cloud providers don't have and will not have 100% of the market. So who has a Dropbox account? And actually, who has more than one online personal storage account? A lot of you. So who has only Gmail? Who has only Outlook.com or Hotmail. So even in our personal life, we have many providers. There are such things such as, let's say, a setup box, the satellite TV that's kind of a hard to have two providers. Or cell, but actually even cell phones now is a big thing. I'm just amazed at the number of cell phones with dual SIMs. Um, so cloud are consumable products or solution, and people and businesses can have more than one supplier. It's exactly like a fleet. You know, like a fleet for any enterprise, they, they will have pickup trucks from Hyundai or GM, and they will have uh, probably, I don't know, like sedan from other vendors. Um, and and every, every, every car basically serves a purpose. So the multi-sourcing, which is basically from many external providers, but also a, a super big trend that is basically the multi-sourcing, the mix of internal and external resources is really, really becoming a hot trend in the, in the enterprise sector and also in the, in the small and medium businesses sector. 
I've worked for very large corporations where basically we had six different CRMs serving different purposes. Um, so what are the platform or the framework options? And I, you know, I didn't try to boil the ocean here where it's just few names to identify the family. There's more than 40 vendors in that space. Some are bigger than others. And actually, uh, just behind CloudStack or just behind OpenStack, there's many vendors, actually. Um, so the IBM way of things, where basically IBM and some other equipment vendors develop large cloud computing platform, and they have a huge ecosystem of resellers. What they're trying to do, they're trying to convince their resellers to basically, instead of reselling physical server, to resell basically cloud servers. Greater margin, actually easier to attract the customer, easier to attach the customer. And you know, IBM has been very clever in the past with their choice of, let's say, dropping the personal computer business. Now, actually, they dropped the small server business to enter the cloud market. So it's a, it's, it's a trend. However, is it a good choice for you if you want to enter that market to have a dependency on that? To basically have your customers calling IBM instead of calling you. Having IBM invoicing your customers instead of you. So who will basically, how easy will it be for you to attach your value added if you go with in, this, in that direction? So we see very new business built on top of that. Then we have the Windows Azure, so you can Go speak with Microsoft. Um, I had the uh, opportunity of being on an advisor board for service providers at Microsoft for many years. And, and it's, it's funny because they compete against their ecosystem. So yes, if you want to become a cloud public provider, you can go and you can sit with Microsoft and you can launch your, launch your thing. Um, however, they will compete against you, actually. And they will never ref send you business. So the only difference, the only difference that you will be able to have is basically local proximity. Yes, Microsoft will never have data centers in every jurisdiction. Um, I think that Myanmar might be a good place to have a data center for, uh, for, for if, if you are in that jurisdiction, so Microsoft will not be there. Uh, Cuba, North Korea, but uh, at, the end of, at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, servers and data could be installed and hosted everywhere. And yes, you can attach your value added, but you will always have the fear that one day someone can come with exactly the same thing. VMware goes exactly in the same direction, although it's a very good solution. It works. They have a very mature ecosystem. That's a solid, robust solution. And, and it's easy to have a lot of value added. There's a lot of, I think it's Blue Luck as an example that adds a lot of value added on data center, on replication and backup and recovery services. So that's a good platform to start and build a business on top of it. However, they will compete against you also because they also sell virtual machines on the internet. Then you have the, the pack of commercial solutions. Once again, I just put three, three names here. You have the Onap, the Parallels, and the Joyan, and many others. Those are very good solution. If you want to go to the market fast, it works. Uh, it's, it's proven. It, it works really well. And actually, you, most of them they are fully integrated, or they have pre-CAN agreement with, let's say, Zurora or Ubersmith for billing and invoicing. It works. Or you can go on the open source. So you have, I guess everyone knows, the Eucalyptus Cloud Stack and OpenStack. Um, you, you know, I, I'll not enter in the, in the debate, it's better to go with CloudStack, OpenStack, or Eucalyptus. I used to be a strong believer of CloudStack, actually I've launched service provider with CloudStack, and, and now I think that OpenStack is, is mature enough and has a much more brilliant f future than the older platform here. And it's easy to see where uh, in the, on the slide, where you have all the dominant players in the Magic Quadrant from Gartner, 75% of those players are OpenStack, are running an OpenStack cloud, or are migrating to an OpenStack cloud. So I think that's a, that's a bold statement. So it comes to basically a few things. So your decision criteria. So what's the best way to add your value added to solve the problems? 
So what's the best platform that basically will support you and will give you the means and the ways to, to enable, to bring your value added to your customers, and then that you will differentiate yourself amongst the others because your unique value proposition has to be unique. And then what makes your service competitive, profitable, with a price structure that will resonate? And when I've mentioned that, let's say those, there's a lot of, you have a lot of choice. You can, you can pick and choose anyone, actually, that is, that is running, that is a, a, a closed ecosystem. However, probably on the, when you will look at the numbers, those license costs, or those integration costs, or maintenance fee will just kill your business case. So you can have the best solution in the world if you don't know the price that your customer can afford, or if you pay too much, your business case will be a disaster and your, your, your product will never have actually uh, leave the ground. Um, please invest in a mature and complete ecosystem to interact with. No, IT is a complex world. No one has the monopoly of good solution. When I, start doing, uh, when I started as a consultant in IT uh, in the 90s, I was selling, I was working for a large three letters uh, consultation firm, and I was selling, like say body shop, like super expert in security. Those guys, they became an expert in antivirus. And though actually those guys, they became expert in intrusion prevention. And actually, finally, I realized that the same guy is now a super expert in anti-spam. Um, so it's, it, you need more and more precise expertise. So the bigger the ecosystem around you is, the the easier you will find and you will have access to resource to support you. That's why I'm not a big fan of those commercial solutions because basically they try to nail you down in a sales process where basically all the doors will be closed and you will have only one number on speed dial, which is their number. Ease of finding technical resources. So that's why I became a fan of OpenStack because now the community is mature. There's a lot of people on OpenStack. You can find, just see how many people are here. Um, so finding technical resources is a challenge. In certain geography, it's even more complex. So make sure that you pick and choose the right platform that will support that. And basically, that will you, where you will have access also to go-to-market expertise. People that you can call and that basically did exactly the same thing that you are trying to do just in different market or in different geography. And then an integrated or complete solution to let you work on your core competency. There's a lot of promoters that will try to convince you to reinvent the wheel. Remember, I said you have to invest. To be successful, you have to invest in your core competency. So reinventing the wheel is certainly not a good approach to be successful in that, in that thing. So basically, by finding a platform where you could have something that is kind of a package, um, I'm also a fan of package because basically you have the package, but the package sometimes has boundaries that will limit your ability of adding value added. And of course, <clears throat> avoid vendor lock-in, which supports what I was just saying earlier, and compatibility with the rest of the world. The old concept of the internet, the whole concept of the cloud is, if, is exchange of information, ex exchange where volumes and data could, be, could, could move and migrate. Um, so it has to be exactly the same in your business. So why OpenStack? So OpenStack, um, you have to admit that Innovance is a French company, head office in France, all, all, all in France, although I'm not French, so that's why I use a Boeing example, not an Airbus. Um, so it, in OpenStack, sorry guys, OpenStack is, is a, an engine where it works out of the box, where you can tweak it, and the way you're going to tweak it basically will make your airplane just much better than other airplanes. That's why when Boeing decided to make the Dreamliner, they, ju they, they, they just didn't take the, let's say, Boeing 767 engine and just rip and replace. They basically work with GE and Rolls-Royce to develop new engine. So OpenStack is a good engine. However, you will need to tweak it to make sure that it's going to work for your business case. It's going to be stable. It's going to be fast performing. It's going to generate whatever you want to generate in, in the time that you think your customer will want it. Then the OpenStack community will always be there to support you. Basically, so 
OpenStack will deliver you the engine. The rest of the community and even your own skills basically will, will build the aircraft. Components, you know, that Boeing and Airbus and, uh, and, uh, and Bombardier and Briar and others are now just assemblers. So they, they are taking parts that are manufactured everywhere in the world and they just make it together however they work on the design. Uh, and they, they make sure that everything is, is certified. So the OpenStack community is now mature enough, has a lot of help that basically can help you do that. And then you will bring your value added. Every airline has access to exactly the same number, same, same kind of aircraft. Your value will be where? The way you're gonna do your layout, your business class layout. Would you go with a 10 ad address or a nine address? Uh, your route, the, of course in the in case of Qatar Airways, the cost of fuel might help a bit your business case. So where you will locate, and actually that's a key business advantage that you might have. You, then the service, the food you will serve, it's basically the way you will add your, business, your, your value added, and that's exactly the same analogy you can apply in the airline industry. So why OpenStack? Because that's a large community, so you're not alone. Um, it's backed by big logos. As I said, 75% of Gartner IAS leaders are going to OpenStack or on OpenStack, but also because you will not be locked in that thing. You will have open API to, hybrid, to, uh, to go hybrid cloud with other vendors, with other providers in your ecosystem, and it's gonna be easy for you to add value. It's open source. You'll be able to play with it, and if you play with it with the right partners, everything that you will do could, be, could become upstream and then will be accepted, and actually you will never be alone. And you, you, you'll be part and you will be integrated in that ecosystem. You have the option of do it yourself, or you have the option of going with an integrated solution that basically will give you the ability of launching your service just much faster. And, 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 and some are 100% some are open source, 100% uh, upstream, and they're all, however, there's also very good solutions that are taking the core open source and just adding proprietary software on top of it, which basically brings a bit of lock-in, of course. Um, I'll speak about, uh, let's say, the, our reference architecture for that, uh, where the way we can do exactly uh, what I've just described and we're not alone in that business. There are, other, there are other businesses that does that. Where basically everything that is read is OpenStack. So you bring your OpenStack, we can take the core OpenStack, the original OpenStack, or some commercial distribution of OpenStack, and then adding all the pieces that you will need to launch, all open source, to launch a public cloud service provider. It works, and you can go to the market actually really, really, really fast. So those kind of solutions now exist. And actually, if you look at the diagram, it's kind of a bit similar to what you have on the commercial side with the Joyon on app or let's say Citrix Cloud Portal. Exactly the same, but now we've reached a point where that exists in OpenStack and actually this is what we do at Innovance for private cloud or for, uh, for public cloud or for public cloud inspired private cloud. So your business advantage by going open source of course, you'll be able to change some components. If you don't like the mod, the, the, if you don't like, um, let's say, Jibbling, you can replace Jibbling. Their API, actually, that's, that's an open API. So if there's someone else who has another open API, or maybe you, that, that the, the, the connector could be developed, and if it's, if it's accepted, that it will be supported. It's backed by a commercial entity, where basically you are not alone. So those companies who are in that space can help you build, run, and also support. So just giving you more time to work on your unique value proposition, your unique selling point. So you, as you work on that, basically someone else is working with you, and then if you want to basically take back, control back of your solution, then you, you can go. And because it's packaged, that's a proven design, it works, you can go to the market faster, and in some market it's really important to go fast because every customer that you're not, there's transaction every day, and actually, if you are not on the, out of the market, actually, you're losing customer every day. And the beauty of that is, of the beauty of the cloud is recurring revenue that you can get. And actually, um, you will have just more features, and you will have a predictable, uh, predictable budget and predictable outcome most of the time. So that's the advantage of going with open source, but also with pre-packaged open, uh, open source solutions. Um, so what about the hardware? So when launching, actually, one of the biggest capital expenditure will be on the hardware. And um, we're often, often asked, 
should we go OCP or commercial mainstream hardware? And I, I strongly believe that if you want to compete against Amazon, you better use the same hardware. Um, so they go what, let's say, OCP style server. So if you want to compete, if you want exactly the same, um, the way we address the market is that um, when we work with customers, they can, be, they can sell at Amazon price and still make a lot of margin, more than 50% margin. Um, so if you want to be in that space, you better use that. If you use very expensive uh, hardware, you will probably not be able to have that same mar those same margin or even actually better because uh, we're working on, especially with OCP vendor, to even cost the cut more, uh, cut the cost more. Um, so I see OCP on the volume and velocity and commercial mainstream more on the value and, and service. So you have to define yourself. Uh, it's very rare that someone would, will play in both, uh, both fields. So now we see that uh, hardware in the, OC, in, the, in the volume and velocity business, hardware adds very little value. Um, however, you have to pay close attention because that contributes a lot to your bottom line. That's going to kill your business case. However, if you go on, 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 on value and service, hardware adds a lot of value. You, you probably want to bring those important logos, let's say EMC, NetApp certified, storage, whatever it is. You might have some interesting connectors uh, to negotiate with those guys. And, and what's funny is that we see now a migration. Uh, we work with a lot of our hardware vendors and a good deal on some UCS or a good deal on NetApp when it's a good deal, uh, it's, it's sometimes you can, be, you can get the best of both worlds. And those guys, um, those guys are, are, are interested in getting in that business because they know that when they win a customer, it's for, it's for a long time. Although OCP is very mature, and if you deal with the right person, so if you have the right support, so who will support? Is it an integrated solution? A bit like what we do at Innovance where we come with pre package pods for some specific needs for volume and velocity where it's easier for us to support because we built the whole thing. Um, however, there's some other cases that the hardware will be provided by someone else. Um, so, and can you, uh, can you afford to go with OCP if you, if, you go volume and if you go value and service? Not necessarily. Um, so what kind of reliability? If your customers are, will run cloud applications, you don't care about the hardware. The redundancy will be built inside of the application. However, if your customer runs Microsoft Exchange Server on top of that, I will recommend, let's say, a traditional server. Um, and it's not a one-size-fits-all. And, and, and you have to speak with the right guys. Uh, in those hardware vendors, they have teams that are not, not, not your local teams. They are dedicated to service providers. And those guys now, actually, I've asked many years ago, can I pay my networking ports by, per port sold or active? And now they do that. Same with storage, per terabyte sold. So if you speak with the right guys, the guys who are able to serve service providers, um, and, and we can introduce you to those guys, so you will get a much better deal. So one last thing, um, and that's back to the beginning. So don't forget to sell. Uh, when, when we look at customers, when we look at cloud service providers who are not succeeding, it's because they just forgot one thing. They, they forgot to sell. If you want to enter that place, your main focus should be on your value added, but your value added if you're not able to sell it. If you don't have a powerful e-commerce website, you will never be able to attract those valuable customers and get those interesting recurring revenue. And that's why, actually, that's the first thing you should have in mind. So how will I sell the thing? And then when, you, when we look at the vendors, the lineup of vendors, there's very few who have a powerful e-commerce website on top of their solution, something that you will be able to cookify your, your, your prospects when they, will, then when they will visit your site. You will be able to enable some remarketing with banners and, and campaigns and activate uh, analytics on top of your site. That's the, the first thing to have in mind because sales is king. Cash, actually cash is king to finance that thing. And then you need, you need quick results. You need to be on the market fast. And then you need, you need basically customers that you attract. Um, so in conclusion, 
I'll say stick to your value added and your unique selling, pro selling proposition. That's the thing, that's your uniqueness about your future business. Uh, find a partner for the rest. Uh, don't be alone. No one has the monopoly of good solutions, but also no one has the monopoly of knowledge. OpenStack is certainly now an excellent framework with a lot of potential with, that can deliver great results, but more importantly, great profitability for many kind of businesses in that industry. Um, there is a possibility that OpenStack is not suitable for every need. Okay? If 100% of your customers are running VMware, guess that you better call VMware. Um, there's a, and, and, and don't try to reinvent the wheel. The, the ones who are not succeeding, it's because they try to reinvent the wheel. A, a, a end user portal exists. An e-commerce website already exists. Don't develop a CRM. I ever actually run into someone uh, yesterday that redevelop an entire uh, billing and invoicing system. That's not value added contributing to your bottom line, or that's certainly not a key differentiator, unless you have a very strange currency. Um, and don't forget to sell your solution. So that's how you could launch a successful cloud service provider with OpenStack. Still have two minutes for questions. Yes. No, there's, um, actually there's many, so you, um, Ubersmith has an a OpenStack API. Uh, we recommend our customers Jibbling. Uh, we've developed uh, a connector, and it's 100% uh, compatible with our OpenStack deployment, and it's in production with some of our customers. And it's very, um, you know, a billing solution has to be customized for recurring revenue. That's a nightmare. If you try to do recurring, uh, I tried doing recurring revenue in SAP, I don't recommend you do that. But uh, those are two examples, and actually we have many examples that, uh, that, that work well with OpenStack. All right, thank you very much.